uh, Medicare uh, payments so that the consumers understand uh, it doesn't cover the cost of care. So similarly is, it, you know, if, uh, um, if it costs a provider $100 to provide a service, Medicare may not reimburse that full $100 back to the provider and as a result what happens is if you if you were to create a pie of where the reimbursement comes from to support a doctor or a hospital or a long-term care facility it's uh, comprised through different sources dependent upon who the provider is so if Medicare doesn't pay up to the cost of care and let's say Medicaid doesn't pay to the cost of care then somewhere it has to be made up Either it's made up because the the costs uh, the loss is absorbed in the uh, provider where they need to be able to make up that revenue through other sources. Private sector subsidizing the Correct. Medicare public sector. Correct. Yeah. So, um, uh, with respect to the Medicare piece of the bill, I think what the what we are watching very closely as an association is uh, there are recommendations to freeze the inflationary factor uh, for providers. So it's a Rob Peter to pay Paul mm. system, which is unfortunate. That's one thing that needs to be revised. Uh. Can we step, on, step back a little bit? Because we're so used to hearing the mantra that if healthcare just wouldn't keep going up, up and up. What are some of the big drivers that keep pushing this? Because some things like cars and houses, they go up, they come down, mm -hmm. or they go up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Why has medical costs continue to rise. And I know the nurses aren't making a killing and the doctors are doing the same as usual. Sure. Is it technology or more care is being consumed by more people? What are some of these drivers that if we don't do something now, it's going to go through the roof? And it's already been going through the roof for the last, what, 15, 20 mm -hmm. years as it continues right. its steep. We Can probably we? both have we both some answers. Please go ahead. We yeah. Sidetrack says uh, some of us know yeah, what some of these drivers are that yeah. we're trying to attack with. with so the maybe I'll give the point of service um, input. I know that there was a Lewin study that was done in 2006 that actually stood. we stood up a task force here in Hawaii looking at this single payer system. And in that report, it, it indicated that one of the drivers was the um, use of uh, technology for, for diagnostics. So I believe that what they cited was that there was a 50% increase in the cost of care as a result of um, continuing to advance in the uh, ability to utilize diagnostics as an enhancement to diagnosing and, and or treating. So does um, that mean more tests or more equipment or both? Well, it costs money to invest in, let's say, an MRI or a CT scanner, and um, and so there's the initial upfront purchase cost. There's also the cost to pay for that um, service and technician. But the consumer, when you look at what the consumer is wanting, the consumer is is interested in having the latest and greatest to be able to aid in. Uh, providing diagnosis and treatment to them. You know, in the so. previous show, I had the uh, the high tech computer computer people here, and they said, as we get better, smarter, quicker, it gets cheaper, and it's just the opposite in your industry where this technology and the diagnostics add on. Everything is getting more expensive. Right. Regulatory mandates is another area where there are where it contributes to administrative costs. For example, uh, even in a nursing facility. Um, they have very slim margins where they're able to operate. Some uh, operate month to month and just being able to make sure they're hitting their payables and, their, and, and payroll. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that is because when uh, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid come out with new regulations, they're unfunded um, mandates to the providers. They have to figure out ways to meet those requirements, but it's an additional administrative burden that doesn't necessarily lend itself to better quality of care to the consumer. In, in other words, the measurable outcomes per regulation may not necessarily be a cost-effective um, decision, yet we're on the receiving end mm -hmm. of the regulations and not necessarily always able to to effect change. And and certainly in Hawaii, you know, it's it's our cost of living. And which so. keeps going up. Jay, you got anything to add about sure. uh, and, the drivers? And I think this is I think this is the <laughs> second big piece. The first really being the, the universal coverage and the second being cost containment. And you really need both 
to have a good uh, health care reform. And I think um, what Coral was speaking about um, at, at the beginning is such a big piece in terms of the diagnostic testing. And um, part of this, and it, it's, a, it's a piece, it's not everything, is the tort reform. Um, hmm. A lot of our physicians pay a lot of money um, for medical malpractice insurance. And what <laughs> that ends up doing is it, it makes them um, concerned a lot of times about medical malpractice in, in sort of did I order every test that I could have ordered when, when a person So I won't get sued. So not, I won't get sued. So I can keep the patient held, but right. healthy. But Let's get them, throw the book at them. Yes, and, I'm and afraid that if I didn't do the test, somebody's going to come back and get me. me. Yeah. And especially, um, you know, with the just sort of social evolution of the Internet and people being able to jump on WebMD and all these other things, they're more informed about their condition and they're more conformed, which is good, but yeah. also more informed about all the possible diagnostic tests that they could be getting. And then you go and oh, how come you didn't give me a CT scan on this? How come I didn't get this test? How come I didn't get that? And so what's happening is this explosion in diagnostic tests when a lot of times they're not needed. Um, it's very similar to what we see um, with antibiotic use, right? So um, mm. every parent goes in and says, my kid's got a sniffle, give him an antibiotic. And now we're seeing all these drug-resistant antibiotics that have come, or you know, drug-resistant strains that have come up because of the overuse of antibiotics. And so, we, you know, we talked about rationing. I don't like that word, and I think it's appropriate health care. And I think the physician mm. being the expert mm. in the room and, <clears throat> and trying to re-empower physicians to say that you're the expert, you really should be making what you think in your professional judgment is the best care for this person in consultation, but not being pushed around and saying, oh, I, I better just do everything to make sure that, that um, you know, I never miss and so I don't get sued because I missed something. Jay, you're on the Board of Health. Yes. Are, are we as Americans or in Hawaii among the healthiest, healthiest in the world? I know Hawaii, we have long, longevity yes. more than anybody else yep. in the country. Are we as a country with our present system less healthy, same healthy, more healthy? Um, as a country, we have a shorter lifespan than most industrialized nations, shorter than Canada, shorter than France, um, and we spend twice as much on health care. How big are the numbers in terms of shorter? From seven two, to, two to three years. Two to three years? Yeah. Okay, so, and it's slowed down. How many years have we been able to bump it up? Yeah, we're in the, in the low 70s for um, men and women, so a couple of women live mm -hmm. a couple of years longer. So we spend well, more and have less years of, of life. Coral, he mentioned the, uh, the T word, tort reform or the mm. TF word. <laughs> uh, as you know, we've gone around the block in this uh, legislature a number of years, a number of times, mm -hmm. and how many successes have we had? In terms of cost containment vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis medical tort reform, zero. Mm -hmm. That is something that we still need <coughs> to have. In the, if we're gonna do cost containment, I know that at the national level they are speaking of tort reform, it, right? but how has it gone here? You've seen the battles between the, the lawyers and the physicians. Did you get in the middle of that, or you stayed out of that one? Um, or you'd it, like to stay out of it now? <laughs> the division, well, the division of labor within our, within our office has actually led me to be on the fringes of tort reform, but what you're saying is correct, that I think that the, that the successes that we can hold on to in those discussions of tort reform is continuing to try to keep open dialogue with all parties so we can, we can make sure there's a, a uh, a shared perspective, I, I guess, mm. from from you know from the healthcare providers, from the physicians, from the lawyers, but um, but we're not there yet. Not we there yet, Jay. Well, how much could be saved by uh, cost containment vis-a-vis -vis tort reform? You know, it's a piece of it. I don't I don't think it's, small, it's the right? whole thing. But it's, yeah, it's, it's, something. it's maybe you know we're looking at maybe ten percent of the puzzle with that. I mean, it's definitely okay. an important I've heard three point. to seven. Okay, ten percent. And, and the universal health care would actually be um, you know another large piece because of mm -hmm. getting rid of a lot of the emergency room care. And so there are definitely ways that we have savings. There's a lot of um, redundancies in the system right now. Another big thing that we, I think we need. Um, is uh, electronic medical records. I mean, Kaiser oh, has it. Yes. Most other places you don't, and so mm -hmm. you're you're getting a lot of um, both medical mistakes of, of uh, you know physicians writing things out on paper and not being able to read prescriptions. You're getting prescriptions that are mm -hmm. duly assigned by different specialists. You're wasting a lot because you're taking a medical mm -hmm. history with every specialist that you go to, and um, having those electronic medical records could really save a lot of money and also increase uh, and improve our care quite a bit. 